Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So today, for the first time, I saw this video that the BBC put out about how veganism is a diet of privilege and it's inaccessible because it's a diet of privilege. And I have to admit, this is kind of an older video. I usually don't respond to videos that are two years old like this, but it is so horrible. It is just so, just such misinformation that I had to respond to it. In fact, it's so bad, I'm gonna do something I usually don't do to horrible videos. I'm gonna link to it down below. I want you guys to watch it. This is a great example of just horrible critical thinking. They're examples, they're, they're lacking examples. There's just vagueness and generalities. In fact, in fact, after watching the video, I just had way more questions than had anything answered by having watched the video. So it's just a complete waste of time. I don't know why the BBC put this thing out. But anyway, let's have a look at it. No offense, but veganism is a privilege that is not accessible to all. While it is a bit offensive, especially if you're a long-term vegan like me, because I'm sick and tired of hearing these lame arguments how veganism is inaccessible, it's a diet of privilege. And to say something sort of kind about her, or maybe to explain why her arguments are so bad as you'll see, the concept of this video was to make her point in 60 seconds, so she wasn't able to go into too much detail. Well, let me give you a little tip. If all you have is 60 seconds to state your case, don't throw out like 20 facts and don't support them in any way as she did. Just pick one or two th or three strong points and argue them well, which she absolutely failed to do. Anyway, let's continue on. We are trying to market veganism as an accessible and easy change for people in their diet. All right, first big question mark. We, when you said we are marketing vegan as this easy change in people's diets, easy and accessible change, like, is she vegan? I mean, she never really made that clear. So that's the first question mark in my head. And yes, veganism is an easy and accessible change as we'll get into more, but let's continue. But there are serious sociological and economic barriers at the moment that are preventing people from doing this. So, so to get slightly technical, I think she's making her thesis here that veganism has these sociological and economic barriers that make it a diet of privilege and therefore make it inaccessible. Let's see how well she argues this thesis. Um, with regards to education around nutrition, increasing rates of poverty. All right, so she's just throwing stuff out there. Ooh, education around nutrition is a problem. Uh, increasing rates of poverty is a problem. And that's all she says. She never gives any details or connects any dots. So unfortunately, it's up to us, the viewers, to try to fill in the dots because her presentation is so horrible. Like I said, just pick a couple points and present them well, which she absolutely miserably fails to do here. So I think she's implying that education around nutrition is a problem for people in poverty with these increasing rates of poverty that she brings up. And and I want to respond to that by saying I, I've seen misinformation about nutrition, just lack of information about nutrition affect all people and all socioeconomic levels, all levels of education. I've met college educated people who have no idea that all plants have protein. They think vegans are all going to like just pass out and, and pass on because we get zero protein in our diets. Education around nutrition is not a problem that just affects people in poverty and it's really inaccessible diet at the moment for people who have a negative relationship with food. Again, I wish she could be a little bit more specific about you know what is she talking about exactly about people with these negative relationships with food. So we have to guess. Is, is she talking about orthorexia, bulimia, and things like that, binge eating? I mean, these are problems that can affect people on any diet. Why would eating just plants and not having any animal products be an, more of a problem or less of a problem for people with negative relationships with food. That doesn't make any sense. She never mentioned that veganism is not a diet. It's not like in the Mediterranean diet or South Beach diet or keto or all that stuff. It is a moral stance against the exploitation and cruelty of animals. If you are against harming, killing, exploiting animals, um, there's no other choice to, uh, other than to not eat animal products. So I don't understand how if you have a moral stance against cruelty to animals, how that enhances orthorexia or something like that. Um, at the moment with increasing rates of austerity that is being seriously suffered by people in the UK, food banks cannot provide the fresh fruit and veg that is needed to sustain a plant-based diet. So once again, we have to like fill in the blanks here. So. 
but with increasing rates of austerity, more people in poverty that they, she's assuming here, uh, many of them, most of them, she didn't say what, rely on food banks. I know many people in poverty who don't rely on food banks. We'll get to that in a minute because eating plants isn't that expensive. But let's talk about food banks. She said they rely on food banks to provide them with the fresh food that is required on a vegan or plant-based diet. And I mean, yeah, you wanna have some fresh food, but you don't have to have an overabundance of fresh food. I mean, a lot of the foods that we eat aren't fresh foods. A lot of foods we eat are, are things in cans like like legumes, you know, beans of all sorts. Um, frozen foods, often we'll use frozen strawberries in a smoothie, frozen corn, frozen peas. So I'm, as she's trying to say, a vegan diet necessitates you have to have all this fresh food because that's not part of the de definition of veganism. It's not a, a way of living which seeks to consume as much fresh food as possible. Again, they're not bagging on eating fresh food. I'm all for it, but you can totally be vegan and have good health and not eat a whole bunch of fresh food constantly as well with a lot of the mainstream diet companies. And if you thought this video is horrible, it gets even worse here. I don't know what she's talking about here about these mainstream diet companies and just check out what she says here. It's just mind blowing. A lot of the mainstream diet companies, the meat, eggs, dairy, animal products are the guilt free and sin free foods. I showed this clip to Angie and she's as confused as I am. So if you understand what she's talking about, you think I've misunderstood it, please comment down below. I'd love to hear your opinion on this. But is she trying to say that there's these diet companies that are putting out foods that have been whitewashed, labeled as, oh, you don't have to worry. We treated the animals really, really well. They were like bathed in olive oil and we treated them like kings and princes and then we killed them. Like, how is that any better? How does it, how's treating an animal really well and then killing it, uh, it um, counterbalance the fact that you just killed an animal, you just killed a sentient being that wanted to live. In fact, to me, that seems even more cruel to treat something almost like a pet and then kill it. You know, guilt-free eggs, guilt-free dairy. I mean, in any of these examples, animals were exploited and animals were killed as well. So I'm not sure. Is he trying to say, well, you don't have to be vegan because you could eat these guilt-free animal products. And again, that's just a bunch of BS. But anyway, let's continue on. Um, and so people are being shamed because it's not easy to give up food in their diet, especially with eating disorders. It's just not an accessible thing for them to do at the moment. Why she bring up the eating disorders once again? I'm sure if you look at the, the true information out there, the vast majority of people with eating disorders are not vegan. So I'm not sure why it would be more difficult or even less difficult to be vegan and have an eating disorder. They are not connected in any way. So instead of, you know, shaming these people, we need to confront the barriers that are stopping them from adopting a vegan diet. The barriers preventing people from becoming vegan. I mean, she tried to argue that there's economic barriers, like it's more expensive to be vegan. And I, as we'll see, that's not an, the, a barrier as big of a barrier she makes it seem like. The biggest barriers are misinformation like this and excuses or just having no concern for the animals. That, to me, as a 10 year vegan and an activist for most of them, that's probably the largest barrier, just a complete apathy. So, anyway, let's get to the economic barriers because. If you look at the comments on her video, remember this is managed by the BBC. They left these up here. Her audience called her out on this. As Dave says here in the comments, I've heard this before and it indicates while well, someone might want to go vegan, what they're really looking for are excuses not to. And he says here, his shopping costs dropped by a quarter simply by replacing meat with plants. And Lewis sarcastically remarks, yeah, rice and chickpeas are so effing expensive. JR says, yes, because fruit and veg costs more than meat. What a load of bollocks. And Sabash says, now eating fruits and vegetables belongs in the privilege category. And I show these comments to support my position that I've been saying all the time, veganism is not an expensive diet. It can be if you want it to be, just like being non-vegan. You could do it on the cheap or you can make it expensive. Depends what food you buy. As a vegan, there's no law saying you have to buy a bunch of expensive processed fake meats and sausages and cheeses and stuff like that. You can if you want to, but there's nothing making you do that. You can eat how we eat, like in our books here, the Happy Healthy Vegan Cookbook. We Let me show you what we just had today. Let me show you the very privileged chickpea sandwich that Angie and I enjoyed this afternoon right out of the book. So my point is not to plug the book, but it's to show how simple and inexpensive a vegan diet 
typically is. I mean, the foundation, the bedrock of the foods we eat are some of the cheapest foods on the planet. Like really, how can anything be cheaper than like say buying a big like 10 pound sack of potatoes at the market for like $5. You can get a, a big bag of rice for not that much money as well. Um, legumes are fairly inexpensive. Even the fruits I, I eat are typically not expensive. You can get bananas for a pretty fair price worldwide. In fact, if anything's a privilege, it's eating meat every day, three times a day. Meat is more expensive than any of those foods I just mentioned there. And yeah, if you live in certain places in the world, like here in the United States, the price of meat is artificially lower than what it ought to be, but that's due to unfair subsidies given by the United States government to the meat and dairy industries. Um, th these are old practices that have no purpose anymore and should be abolished. Why should steak have an advantage price-wise over Beyond Burgers? Why isn't the United States government also subsidizing new plant-based startups or any other food? Why aren't like, you know, potatoes being subsidized? Why are the animal industries getting favoritism? It's because of the well-funded lobbies here in politics that support animal agriculture and fund politicians who will continue and perpetuate these unfair subsidies. Anyway, to get back on point, yeah, this is complete bollocks. This BBC video and any other argument I've ever heard trying to argue that veganism is a diet of privilege. It's not accessible to those who are of lower means. It's a diet for the wealthy only. Again, I challenge these people that make these claims. Please comment if you're one of them. Let me know if you know of any foods that are less expensive than the ones I just listed there a couple minutes ago. And I can just stop you because you can't. So this argument is complete nonsense and uh, it's, it should be in our list of top five, at least top ten most annoying are anti-vegan arguments because it just is completely factually incorrect on all levels. Please comment down below. Let, let me know if you saw this video back when it came out almost exactly two years ago. Um, like I said, I never saw it before. And if it's new to you, let me know what you thought of her just throwing stuff out on the wall and seeing what sticks and nothing stuck whatsoever. So yeah, show this if you are a logic teacher, a writing teacher, show people how what not to do, now how not to argue a point. So anyway, I gotta get going guys. I want this to be too long and let's just keep it beating guys. Bye.